Interviews with the best in their fields, teaching you how to excel in careers that don't require traditional college. You're listening to the College Alternative Podcast. Insider tips and advice, straight from the experts. And now, here is your host, James Christian. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the College Alternative Podcast. Today is episode 10, and we're talking with Ezra Hutterer. He has been a longtime master plumber, and he's going to teach you how to get into the trade of plumbing. So enjoy the show, guys. Perfect. All right, we can start, man. All right. All right. So hello and welcome. Uh, today we have on Ezra Hutterer. And hopefully I pronounced that last name right, Ezra. But um, you did good. And um, so, why don't you explain your background, um, what you currently do, and what you did? Okay. Well, I am currently a manufacturer's representative for heating and cooling equipment, and the uh, the products that are related to that. So, um, and it's a, it's a big market. So it's a it's it's kind of gotten to a point of where it's everything is evolved around heating and cooling comfort so um but my I, I started out as a plumber pipe fitter and before that i just started out as some kid looking for a job <laughs> and um it's kind of funny because i was i was actually hired as temporary help um i was 20 i was in my 20s i can't remember exactly how old i was i was maybe 22 23 and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. You know, I was living from paycheck to paycheck and job to job, and I didn't, I didn't know. And I had a, I had a baby girl coming my way, and I kind of needed to get some money together. Yeah, talk about motivation. Yeah, kids will, kids will put you, put you going through. So I called this guy up who was looking for some a hand, and and he said, "Oh, I got three weeks of work for you." So I took it, and I didn't, you know, I did, I didn't know anything, and I just took it. Well, three weeks it came up, and three more weeks got piled on me. He says, hey, you want to stay for a little while longer? And we kept doing that for quite a while. <laughs> and uh, finally, he said, do you want to you wanna become full-time and start an apprenticeship? And I said, an apprenticeship? What's an apprenticeship? And he says, well, there's going to be guys that will teach you the craft of plumbing, plumbing and pipe fitting, and you'll start an apprenticeship. So um, I, I enjoyed what I was doing at the time, and it, you know, it was a little bit back-breaking, but I was 22. I could, I could handle it. So I said, sure, and the next day I signed up with an apprenticeship with the uh, Local 20 uh, Union Association and um, started my apprenticeship. So what was nice about it is I got hands-on experience during the day making money, and then at night, the union provided a, a class room setting. So in the evening, every evening, we'd, we'd have class. So I got the how to, how to put it in the real world, how to use it in the real world. But then at night, we got the reasons why and how and the philosophy behind it, the history behind it, the math, the science, the chemistry. I mean, there's, it expands into so much. And it just kind of – so with the two, with the two I, I've – I, I finished my apprenticeship and I was able to maintain or uh, obtain my journeyman license for plumbing. So that's nice. So you were getting paid during the day and then mm -hmm. you were going to training at night. So you were actually getting a salary while you were going to school. So you yes. weren't going into debt. Exactly. Which is awesome. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, they say, oh, well, the union, you got to pay union dues. Well, yeah, you got to pay union dues, but the union also provides medical and dental and health insurance. And, and optical and stuff like that right out of the gate. So if you're an apprentice plumber in the union, you are eligible for those benefits. So nice. paying your dues is like paying your health benefits. So it kind of offsets the whole idea. And since you only get paid a certain scale, they make it according to what you get paid. So it's not like you're going to break the bank or you're going to. So it's it's a good way to start out, especially for a single you know young guy with a girlfriend and a new kid on the way. You're kind of wondering how you're going to pay for things. <laughs> so, um, but as I started to grow with that, with uh, that company and being a union, a union shop, I just got, you know, and I, it was like a round peg that fit into a little round hole and I, I loved it and I'm still, still love it. And I'm, you know, moving along. So that was 
14, uh, 16 years ago. Yeah, so that's that was my next question here is how long did you do the plumbing thing before you moved on to the um, you know your current job? Well, interesting enough, I still I still do the plumbing thing. That's what got me my current oh, okay. job. Okay. Um, because I got into uh, the plumbing led into um, the 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 heating and cooling side of things, and it also led into piping theory and you know velocities of how much water flow through pipe and and just a whole lot of other mathematical stuff that goes into and then also into like how to fix and repair heating equipment you know like a boiler if you get a hold of a boiler for a residential house how are you going to fix this how are you going to make it work and the proper way to make it all this stuff so it just kind of compiles as you move along and you gain these little experiences and my uh, my current boss um who who's who's an engineer um did not receive half the training that I received in college from what I received from just everyday experiences. And that's why he hired me. So yeah. there's definitely but, something uh, to be said about experience, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's uh well, it's, it's, it's what's going to happen because yeah. it's, it's, it's right there. <laughs> that's Murphy's law for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, okay. And so, um, before before we started recording here, you started to talk a little bit about the different types of plumbers that are out there. Mm -hmm. Can you can you re go over that again? Um, sure. There are there are different types of plumbers. Plumber, just to give a little history on plumber. Plumber means lead worker, from the Latin word uh, lead, which is plum 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 bob or something like that. Okay. Uh, I can't remember right off sure. the top of my head, <laughs> but it it means lead worker because in the old days that's how they moved water was through lead pipes. So it took lead workers to make these pipes and to move them on because, like, the Romans have sophisticated plumbing systems that are all in lead. Um, so it, you know, you can get your plumber and then you can, it, you know, and that does anything with pipe. Then pipe fitters are more of a welder and a um, metallurgist and, 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 and steel worker kind of plumber that, that deals in bigger pipe, more industrial size pipe. Um, you know, like stuff that's like two feet in diameter, and you know they've got the big cranes holding things together. Um, so that's where more fitters are kind of get. Um, then there's steam fitters, which which guys are do a lot of steam. So not only are they welders, but they're dealing in with high pressure steam, which is very dangerous because it can cut you in half or explode. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't say explode. Rapidly expand. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. You, you're really not allowed to say some of those things when you're talking to kids because they go explode. What do you mean explode? Um, but it's, it's reality uh, here. <laughs> yeah, um, and then so then you get into steam, which steam is a big thing because that's what's been running our country for the last 150 years. Um, mm. You know, steam is in every building in the high rises that you see in like New York City and and in San Francisco and L.A. They, they use steam for heating that stuff because it's very very efficient. Um, they also use steam to run trains, which people don't look at it, but the train, when they call it an engine, it's actually a really big boiler. Mm -hmm. And it was a boiler maker that sat on that train and it kept that engine going. So steam is a, is a big, steam fitter is a big one. And then there's like a boiler maker for these large boilers um, and mechanics for um, maintaining the equipment that turns water into steam or heats up water and moves it or, and stuff of that nature. So that's like the boiler makers would be in that area and they're more specified into working on the boilers themselves. And boilers now, you know, they used to be cast iron, big heavy machinery that they built the building around. Now they're lightweight stainless steel and running at almost 100% efficiencies wow. trying to uh, heat homes. So it's it's definitely come a long way. But there are like there are buildings in New York that still have the original 1885 steam boiler sitting in there and they're heating just fine. <laughs> well, there are buildings in New York though that still have those the the uh, the water towers on top and they've exactly. got some they've got some of the cleanest water out there and it's pretty exactly. amazing. It's really exactly. really Exactly. Yeah. That's the other thing is plumbers are the protectors of the health of the nation. So that with with the, with what the plumber knows is protecting our sanitary drinking water and how to remove waste and stuff of that nature. So that's anything that can go through pipe. That's what they deal with. Yeah. So because there's a lot of jokes about plumbers, you know, you got your you got your plunger, you know, you got some plumbers crack going on. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, but ironically those guys even make a lot of money <laughs> yeah well two points first i mean you can definitely tell about the health of the nation i mean what we saw in flint 
Michigan mm-hmm. when plumbing pipes get neglected and, and all the exactly. health, health risks that, that are associated with that. And the second thing is I really wanted to have a plumber on just because – and it's one of those it's one of those statements that I'm not quite sure you kind of half believe, but you're like, plumbers make almost as much as doctors. Now I don't know if that's true or not, you know, but I could Can almost be. I could almost believe that because not as many people are going into plumbing. It, it seems like, um, and so you know, millennial generation, everything like that, they just don't know, they just don't know how to plumb as as much, so they have to call a plumber. Right. Well, the the thing is, is that our educational system is a money making machine, just like everything else. And if you ever notice a Notre Dame or Purdue or um, my wife went to Reed College, they never in a million years would offer plumbing as a class. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because it's it's not advertised, but there are people that are just not fit for traditional college or university they're you know they for whatever reason they may be more mechanically oriented but schools don't tell you that they say well you need to uh either go to college or you are not going to get a good job Mm -hmm. which is totally untrue well it's a pipeline Um, too you know it's a pipeline from elementary to high school to college to graduate school to yeah now i'm too overqualified for a job (laughs) and my wife my wife is a part of that machine you know she went to high school she went to uh reed college as an undergrad she went to utmb the university of texas medical branch as a graduate student and then she went as a um as a uh uh, postdoc as unm at the Mm -hmm. university of new mexico and it was kind of a hassle for her and finally she kind of took a page out of my book and said i can i can make my own job and she went and she made her own job with what she had learned and she now writes for a prestigious magazine up in Los Alamos National Labs. Yeah, I think a so lot of people kind of, are starting to do that now. Just starting to create. Yeah. You know, entrepreneurship is definitely on the rise in this nation. Exactly. And that's what plumbing gives you is it's it gives you a way to create your own job. And that's yes. what everybody does. They create their own job. You know, but it's it gives you something to go with. Um, you know, I, I knew a guy who created his own job with video games. He plays video games for a living. Um, <laughs> and you were talking about doctors that making as much as plumber or plumbers making as much as doctors. Yeah. I know a neurosurgeon. I know a neurosurgeon who quit his practice to become a plumber. And I worked with him in the union. And he was loving every minute of being a plumber because it was more thought moving for him, I guess. It mm-hmm. was just it, it, it fit tickled his fancy. Yeah. yeah, fit him better. And, and here's a guy who spent thousands of dollars in education, and now he's getting paid to be educated. <laughs> he was older. He was in his, he was in his uh, late 40s when he started his apprenticeship, but he was doing it. So, so. so getting back to you know the type of plumbers that you were talking about before. Now, um, maybe a couple questions with that. Uh, mm-hmm. Are there different training pipelines that you go through for each one of those different types or are you kind of building off a base and then working your way up yes yes and no so there's there's a there's a you know you you still have to be an apprentice for being a pipe fitter or being a boilermaker steam maker or plumber but what the funny thing is is like just as an example plumbers can be pipe fitters but pipe fitters can't be plumbers oh because a plumber a plumber carries a license not just certification, he actually carries a license. Okay. So he is qualified to work on plumbing stuff that's in, you know, homes and buildings and, and infrastructure. But then if they need something that requires pipe fitting, such as a um, BF Goodrich has a, a brake pad plant that uses a lot of boilers to bake the brake pads. Okay. And plumbers go in there and, and, and pipe fitters, and they do a lot of welding. So that would be where the pipes would be for, like, a pipe fitter. But they've taken a lot of plumbers with them because their plumbers can be pipe fitters. So in the hall, in the in the union hall, they ask you when you start your apprenticeship, they say, do you want to become a plumber or a pipe fitter? Because you can do either or. And most of the guys pick plumber because they can always go to – they can do the pipe fitting gig but still fall back on the plumbing gig. So it's it allows them to do both. Um, steam fitters have their own set of licenses and, and, and certifications as well. But that 
just where you, wherever you start, you can kind of drift into whatever you think you want to do. And I know guys that were like, I'm not going to be a plumber and I'm just sticking with the pipe fitting and I'm, I don't even care. And they do that. So it's, it's, um, it, it allows you to find what fits and works for you. Okay. So that kind of drifts into my next. That kind of drifts into my next question: is is one better than the other? And and maybe in terms of enjoyment, that depends on the person. But it sounds like you need to really look into license and certification, and and what yes. that allows you to do. Exactly. Okay. Because they're going to get certified regardless. So like the pipe fitter who travels, the, a lot of guys, these guys travel, and they'll travel three thousand miles to do a welding certification at the door, and you know, they'll, they, and I'm, what I mean by a certification is a guy walks up with an x-ray to this welder and sees if you've made a mistake. He mm -hmm. x-rays it. And if you pass, then you get the job and you're hired. If you don't, you're going down the road to the next job. So there is, you know, a little bit of that going on. But it all depends on what you're into. If you want to travel, if you want to, you know, stick close to home. I mean, you can do all those things there, you know, either, either way. But it's what fits it's it's one of those things that's got to fit you it's got to it's got to make sense to you because it can it can beat you up because it's it's a mental game because there's guys in there that are they're hardcore and they're you know they're going to pick on you and whatever but also there's guys in there that'll hold out their hand while they're picking on you and show you something cool to make some money so, so it's 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 kind of a you know you got to be comfortable because there's going to be plenty of things in there that are uncomfortable like digging a ditch isn't the most fun thing in the world but it's got to be done mm -hmm. and you know or hauling a bunch of heavy pipe into the into the building i used to i used to treat it as it was uh, there are people that pay for the gym and then i get paid to go to the gym every day so <laughs> lift that's with the way back. i treated it lift with yeah. your back and not with your legs <laughs> exactly well i i learned to lift with my legs real quick because at a young age my back did go out so i learned <laughs> how to pick up my legs real quick so <laughs> Um, okay, so getting into you know the plumbing side of the house here, uh, are there various levels of expertise? Now you're talking about getting your journeyman certification. Is there such a thing as like a master plumber, or mm -hmm. are there various levels? Yes. So um, the 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 levels um, they start out as very small potatoes, like a helper. That's how I started. You know, okay. and that's how most people start is they, they just show up and they're just there to help and kind of, you know, you pick a couple of things up like how to clean fittings and how to do some stuff, but you're going to do that with any job. You're going to pick it oh, up yeah. and start. Doing it. Yeah. And then, and then there's a full out apprentice, which is a, um, it's the right hand man to the journeyman. And he's actually taking, he's the new generation of the journeyman to take on the training and also it's his time it's his paying his dues to become a journeyman in, in so to speak um but they're there to 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 learn to you know do what's asked of them you know to help out do some of maybe the harder work that the journeyman really can't do anymore you know it's the younger generation and it's it's there's ups and downs to that part of the training um and then after after a amount of time and it depends on what where you're at, like what state you're in or what, what country you live in. Um, and there's all these different, you know, criteria you have to meet. Um, I got my journey in, in Colorado. So there was a four year apprenticeship program. So it's about 8,000 hours is what they do. So you sign up with the state and then they keep track of your hours on when you're working, when you're not. And you, you know, if you miss a couple hours, then they're gone. They're gone. You don't get those hours to fudge them in. Okay. Um, but the journeyman helps keep that um, in line, and that and you and you work really hard. It's that's there's there's your college, there's your four years of college because it's it's hands on. It's it's in some cases there's some uh, formal education, but it's that's the part that's probably the hardest. Helper, you know, helper can come and go. They can leave. They can do whatever they want. Apprentice is kind of got to stick in there. After you pass your certification test you, you do you do what's required you uh, the state gives you a test you have to prove it on uh, knowledge of the code which is more like a law book so you have to learn law through this whole time because the code is the minimum of what you can do that to protect the people that's what they're going to allow you so you have to try to figure out how the code is interpreted and then there's people that tell you how the code is interpreted but it's and that goes down a whole other path uh -huh. but then you become a journeyman and that allows you to qualify you as an employee to work anywhere as a plumber. 
So if you are a journeyman plumber, you are a qualified plumber, and you can work all by yourself if you need to or wherever you want to go every day. So that's where that leaves you. And then, and the name journeyman is like I think it was a, um, a daily pay or something. It's a French word, journée or something like that, which means daily pay. Um, but then you know it took it a little further. They're, they're, they travel around to get paid and stuff of that nature. And where master plumber comes in or a master of his craft is basically a journeyman plumber who owns his own business. Okay. And that's the only difference. So and you have to be a little bit of, you, in the, the, the times now are saying that, you know, like I think in Colorado you had to be a journeyman for, I think it was something like a year before you could become a master plumber and get your license and do all that stuff and, and start a business and run your own tools and your shop and get yourself some journeyman and stuff of that nature. Um. So that's kind of where it goes, and but that's in any trade. So if you think about it, it's it's helper, apprentice, journeyman, master. But okay. journeyman and master are real close. So when guys tell me, "Oh, I'm a master plumber," all it says is you have your own business. Okay. <laughs> that's all okay. That it's <laughs> it's, it still sounds nice, though. It's still yeah. it's you know it's a. <laughs> so it's um. Okay. But okay. that's that's those are the levels. Those are the levels. And then um. Do do the wages increase then too, uh, depending upon they're, the levels? I'm assuming yes, they do. they're supposed yeah. they're supposed to. Um, in the union, um, when you start out as an apprentice, you get sixty percent of what a journeyman makes. So if the if the hall has negotiated for um, thirty two dollars an hour, an apprentice makes sixty percent of that, and then they still get all the benefits and stuff of that nature and. The apprentice can do everything in the hall except vote on political stuff, which is fine. The apprentice has to concentrate on getting his journeyman. Yeah, yeah. But then every year as you grow and as you get, they do a 10% increase. And those numbers can fluctuate a little bit because of politics, economics, um, economy, you know, the economics and the, with the economy and stuff like that. But what's, you know, what's the going rate? What's going on? Um and they, they, that, that's one nice thing about the union is they fight hard for what's going, the going rate is. So you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to get paid what the top rate is around the country. Um, but and then by the time you hit journeyman, then, then you start to, you can still grow and you can say like, okay, if I take the night shift, I'm going to get another $35 an hour. If I travel, I'm going to get another $10 per day or $100 per day or whatever it's going to be. So you can you can you can negotiate some of that stuff, and there's always room for advancement. Mm -hmm. um, some, but the problem is, is that sometimes in the in the hall anyway, is that sometimes you make eighty thousand a year, and the next year you only maybe make forty, and it just because the economy is is tanking. Mm -hmm. But that's any job. That's any job. It doesn't matter if you're a, a plumber or if you're a, a librarian. If the economy is tanking, it's going to take take it out of your pay so but that's the, the beautiful thing about the union in in my opinion is that they help fight for keeping it as up as high as it will go so that's that's where the pay grade lasts there but, but in private sector in like in in just private shops um they can do whatever they want hopefully mm -hmm. it's an honest guy and he's paying what the union is paying um now they have to when they go into government jobs they have to pay certain wages like david ba davis bacon wages which was a, 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 a law passed in like 31, 32 maybe um, for, for public works jobs. So anybody that's working on these jobs has to have a certain pay, the going rate, the highest going rate. And the unions helped push for that. So they were part of that. So even a private sector, if they get a, if they get a job like that, they have to pay because the you know, it was passed the law in legislation. State that, yeah. Yeah, okay, so you, exactly. get two, you have two sides of the house. You've got the union side of the house. Mm -hmm. Which helps stabilize stabilize mm -hmm. the wages, and then you've got the private side. So a plumber can be yeah. on either side. Mm -hmm. and, okay. Okay. Yep. 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 And they uh, the union side calls the the private side the scabs. So <laughs> they call them scabs because they're taking away union jobs by doing that. That's their their mentality and their thinking. I don't. I I'm union proud, but I don't necessarily think that. I think a lot of these people, eat private or non. They're just trying to make a living for their family and trying to enjoy what they're doing, um, you know. But it, you gotta, again, you gotta weave and dodge your way through what works for you. So if you're on the private side, you gotta find what works. If it's not working, you gotta you gotta move out. But 
you can do that if you have certain skills under your belt. Mm-hmm. You can move around. You can you're you're more um, desirable. Okay. So okay. to speak. Okay, so you're talking about apprenticeships. Mm-hmm. Is that pretty much a standard way of getting trained? Or are there actual colleges, schools out there that teach plumbing um, and certify you and license you that way? There, well, uh, the schools, I don't know much about the schools, but I did, I did, I have, I have looked into them previously um, before, before, you know, like as I was doing an apprentice, my apprenticeship and as I was, you know, as I was, as I was growing, um, there are trade schools. Um, and they're all over the country, and they, they do all kinds of trades. They do for carpentry, they do for uh, plumbing, welding, all kinds of things that you can think of. Um, and I, I believe those are usually privately private private schools. They're not big big schools and stuff of that mm-hmm. nature. Um, community colleges definitely sometimes will offer um, um, a program, but a lot of times in the community college, it's only two years. Okay, and as opposed to the four. Get, Right, you can okay. get a, you can get two years out of it, which will help you get into like the residential side of your license. They, there's some states that'll give you what's called a residential journeyman's license, so you can work on a ha- like a house that's got maybe four four apartments in it or a building oh, that's got. Oh, okay, but not that's the industrial side. Can... That's not right. versus the industrial or, side. Right, or okay. if you had like a big um, like a big apartment complex or a hotel, you couldn't do that, but you could do a single family dwelling. Um, but there, that's, that's only in some places. I don't think that's everywhere. Um, so schools do that sometimes, but they, um, a lot of things that I've heard from guys that took school, it was tough because they, they didn't make it interesting and they didn't make it the hands on that they should have, um, just from what I've heard. And that's what kind of uh, drives it into the ground and not really desirable to go because you're not actually getting to apply and practice what you're learning. Um, yeah, there, that makes sense. Yeah, it's an alt- But if you're looking for for some sort of experience, because like getting into something is hard experience. You know, you're like, hey, I'm here to work, and somebody goes, well, do you have any experience? You say, well, no, that's. But I'm here to work, and they say, well, I need somebody with experience. So you can say, yeah, I've got some experience, even if it's a little. You know, if you took the class for a few months. You're going to know something. You're going to learn something. Mm-hmm. It can get your foot in the door. I don't. I don't down on any of that. I'm still taking classes and stuff that's offered um, through through the industry. Um, you yeah. know, I, I travel all over the all over the country to do um, classes and 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 trainings and even just product intro, just to see what what people are doing. Um, you know, and and fancy ways of putting things together. And you know, I've got the latest and greatest and easiest thing to put together. So. I still do that. So to do those things is not is not a, b- a bad idea. Money wise, I don't know. I think you like if you went to a community college, it would be what the tuition of the community college is. You know, you'd have yeah. to still pay for your class and stuff like that. But there's you know that's those all that is good, and that's basically what they're going to teach you in an apprenticeship is you got to find somewhere to learn it. So that's going to be experience finding somewhere to learn. It's going to be finding you know real world experience to find something. But if you're not really sure where to start, that's as good a place as any. Yeah, know? if you can't get that hook up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, um, you, you just got to overturn rocks until it pops up because it's all out there. You just got to kind of keep flipping things over and seeing what what's going to pop out. Um, I I just happened to fall into mine. I just I, I asked for a job one day. And I <laughs> haven't looked back since. <laughs> Show up, work work hard today. I might fire you tomorrow. Exactly. Okay, show up again even, tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, and I wasn't even worried about it. I was like, yeah, whatever, fire me. I don't care. I'm, 20, I'm 22. I'm strong. I know everything. <laughs> okay, so if you do go, so the takeaway here is there are programs in community colleges out there, but they're, mm-hmm. they might be shorter. So mm-hmm. look for one that's longer if you can. Yep. Look for one that certifies you maybe right. beyond the residential side of the house. And right. then uh, look for one with hands-on. Right. Okay. Right. That's the yeah, takeaway no, here. Just, yeah. Just and even if it, and, you know, if they're saying, well, they, we don't have hands-on, but we'll teach you this for a few months. Take it. Mm-hmm. You know. And then the next one down the road will show you something that's hands-on, maybe, or you might be able to get a job that's hands-on during the meantime. You know. So it's, it's. Um, I, I always tell, I always tell my daughter the same thing. I was like, if the door opens, you better walk through it, because <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna shut. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, my, Murphy's Law my, rewards people that, that try, you know. I mean, yeah. opportunities pop up for people. Exactly. Well, my daughter is uh, 15, 16, 
15. And she's been uh, putting pipe together with me since she was about uh, seven years old. So she's and a master. She's a math. Uh, she's a master, master of her up. trade. Okay, but, nice. Uh, I can act, she actually can sweat pipe better than most men I know. So it's I can I can leave her alone, have her put something together. I can go do something. And I had an employee at the time, and he was like, "Oh, it looks like she took my job." And I said, "She did. She took your job." <laughs> and she's she's ten. <laughs> 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 but she she quit she quit her she got about three years into it she's like I'm done with this I don't want to work with you um she, it was her third summer and she said I'm done I can't do this because you're my dad and it's embarrassing and I, I understand so but <laughs> she's come across a couple of times when we're working on the house she'll pick up the torch and do something for me and then she'll walk away and it's pretty good so well she's has that experience in training now she can definitely mm -hmm. always fall back on that if she wants to do something else exactly you know? that's important. exactly that's important so <laughs> um okay so let's see here um are you seeing what you were, you were talking a little bit about the job market and everything in the economy and everything like that mm -hmm. so are you seeing the hiring of plumbers on the rise is it is it kind of stayed steady is it going down down a little bit what what, what are you seeing as far as jobs um, for plumbers what i see is 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 there's a lot of jobs out there and there's a lot of people taking them but they're not what I would call plumbers. Um, the problem is, is that in, in some places there is no apprenticeship program. So like in New Mexico, there's no apprenticeship program. Okay, places, you mean states? Right. State, okay. Um, states, okay. and then I'm assuming that there's probably some countries that don't even have it, but it's, I, you know. But in, in the plumbing game, you have to take tests to get your journeyman's, and that's given anywhere. But there are places where they don't require an apprenticeship program. So the journeyman's can say, oh, this is my cousin. He's been working for a while. I'm going to make you a journeyman today so that you can, you know, we're going to fudge your hours and we're going to make this happen. So the, there, are, there are job openings, but the, the training and the capabilities of some of these people are not up to par. Um, I'm going to say probably I've seen if the, if the if the whole gamut was about a hundred percent, eighty percent of those people are not very good. Twenty percent are. It's mm, the whole wow. eighty twenty. You know? I didn't know it was going to be that and that it's, high. It is, but I've I've also been in a room where everybody in the room is a great plumber, and I've been in rooms where everybody in the room is just. You know, I'll, I think I'll step outside before I get hurt. You'd re you'd rather have your ten year old. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But that, and then now that's also a matter of opinion on my part because I'm I'm critiquing it. But um, I it, that's what I see. So there are jobs out there, and there are always jobs out there. Plumbing is one of those things that's kind of recession proof. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs a plumber. There was a, a friend of mine always says you need you need your doctor, you need your lawyer, and you need your plumber, and that's what you need. Especially at two in the morning when exactly. when a pipe bursts in your house. Oh, exactly. I, You're probably gonna need the plumber more often. Oh, I remember we came back from vacation, and uh -huh. we see water streaming down our garage or driveway, uh -huh. and a pipe had burst <laughs> over our garage. Nice. <laughs> and it was two, three in the morning. We had just driven about two hours from the airport, and we we're all tired. And oh my god, it was horrible. Oh was, yeah, oh yeah. And you call that guy, and he's a little grouchy. I would have paid anything up. for that guy to show up. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And they know it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. They know it. <laughs> but um, that aside, there's all this stuff that you can do. So you can go get hired. You can get into the job market. You can get into the union. You can join the military with it. You can go into so many things, and it's just – it's. but you can start your own thing. It's like if you want, start your own service business or start your own construction business as a subcontractor. Or, you know, um, I know a guy who used to build um, – it was this little part that goes into a heating system, mm -hmm. and he would build it in his front yard. So they'd give him the dimensions. He'd build it just off of what they had on paper, and then he'd sell that part to him, fabricate it up to him for you know several thousand dollars, and that was how he did his business. <laughs> wow! And he didn't have to argue with people. He didn't have to do anything. He just, but that's how he did it. Um, now this was a guy that also, when when you said I wanted a, a, a you know ten and five eighths, that piece of pipe was ten and five eighths. There was no tolerances there. It was yeah. just that's what it was. Um, but it's um, you know that's 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 the thing is is just if you get into the opportunity, it's all out there. Your work is going to show for itself. So what you take out of it is what you put into it, and it'll show. But the economy, you know, like 
we get guys here in New Mexico that are unlicensed and they'll go to a homeowner and say, Hey, I can do that job for you for like under the table. Let's uh, do cash and I won't charge you as much as a journeyman plumber will, but I could do the same job. And so they'd go through that deal and whatever it is breaks and floods the house, so to speak, or melts. Um, I, they had a, uh, just recently a, a, a $3 million home went melted. It didn't burn up. It melted. melted melted because the water soaked everything and oh wow it just took it all out and it was just it was unsalvageable it was but it was an unlicensed plumber yeah. and and it gives the guys the person, bad names yeah exactly so now and and you know they got to try to catch him and stuff like that and so there's but the the person the the customer which the customer is always right as they say when you go to fix something, say it wasn't they didn't melt the house down, but you you as a legitimate plumber go to fix it, regardless if it's cheaper. Now they're having to pay a second time, and they're mad even more, and you're taking the brunt of it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's there's a and that's what makes it frustrating because there are the regulations in some places and the and the um, making sure that the they're carrying their licenses and they're maintaining their education and they're doing those things is slacking a little bit. And that's, that's everywhere, but mm-hmm. that's in everything. Okay. Um, so I can't just, but that's what I see here in New Mexico. So, um, what I, what I tell people all the time is if you're a homeowner and a plumber walks in your house, first thing you can say is, do you have your uh, license by chance? Cause they should be carrying it on them. Mm, and, okay. Oh, I forgot it in the truck or I'm not licensed. I'll get it. I'll get, get it later. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a, it's one of those things you can kind of whoops excuse me it's one of those things you can kind of go with but that's that's where it gets to is the quality of the plumbers is lacking but the jobs are still plenty plentiful. Okay, it's are you seeing so, are you seeing this generation and and a uh, few future generations like like your daughter are they mm-hmm. are you seeing them interested in plumbing are you seeing a lot of people getting oh, yeah. into the business? Yeah, um, I've I've probably turned. Let's see, ten kids onto it, and five of them are still continuing. One kid who I didn't think was going to make it, he's up in Colorado and he's working for a real, real good plumbing contractor up there. He says he loves it, and um, uh, his dad still thanks me for guiding him down that path because he's got a great job. So he says, <laughs> nice. uh, "Okay, and good." It, and then his stepdad kind of encouraged him too because his stepdad's a welder. And his stepdad was like, no, man, you can make money. You can make money. So he, he went on. But I think, like, like last year, I, I got five kids turned on it. And they're still, you know, ten kids and five kids are still doing it. Okay. So That's it's, good. Um, That's good. They're enjoying it. Just because It's not for everybody. No, it's not. Nothing. Yeah. Just wanted to so. make sure that some, some people were still interested in it. You know, a lot, of, mm-hmm. a lot of parents nowadays definitely feel a lot of pressure to uh, – send their kid to college you know oh yeah you know we have that friend you know we have that talk with all of our you know friends their parents of mm-hmm. you know wh- wh- what's our responsibility level here do we have to send them to college or do we, you know where, yeah. where do we go what do we do yeah what do we do you know plumbing uh, is a good option i think mm-hmm. it's a very good option and it's a it's a it's it's something that can extend into other things so if you want to be an engineer if you want to be an electrician, plumbing can take you into electricity. It can branch out into heating uh, HVAC, which is like air conditioning and refrigerant lines, and, and then it can take you into. I I got so good with it. I'm um, one of the reasons why I got hired in my current job. I got into solar and geothermal. Oh wow! Um, heating and cooling. So now I'm certified um, uh, loop uh, ground loop installer. Um, I design systems with big companies, and and of course my boss. We all get together with engineers, and because the engineers will come in and say this works on math, and then so how's this going to work in the real world? And I'll sit there with them and go, this isn't going to work. You know, this will work. This will. so it can take you to places. It's it's you know I've seen the world with it. I'm I've been traveling around the world with it. Um, it's. Uh, you know, it's, I'm starting to branch out even further, but I've seen most of the United States with it, mm-hmm. and you know, going going places, and and it's not just plumber; it's a whole world opens up for you. Mm-hmm. So you can you can say, okay, I started as a plumber, but I got really into this controls thing. So I I got into the way the computers and the, now the thermostats are run off Wi-Fi, and you can turn oh, yeah. your house heat up and down from from your iPhone. Yeah, the whole smart. Smart the whole, uh, yeah, house the whole thing. smart thing, and then um, my house runs on. Uh, so my house right now, 
uh, most people pay about four hundred and six hundred dollars a month in propane sometimes, uh, or in natural gas you probably get about two hundred three hundred bucks. That mm -hmm. would be my house. I think my wife and I have the highest we've paid on our gas bill is ninety three dollars because I made it efficient enough to keep it warm and to keep it you know to keep where we don't have to really work as hard to you know yeah. keep it going. Yeah. Um, well, if you, if you from, save your if you save your customers money through optimization right. too, I mean that right. makes you valuable to them. Exactly, and that's and that's right now is one of the the highest paying plumbing parts. Right now, in my opinion, is the heating and cooling and the and the uh, high efficiency or the uh, uh, high alternative energy industry. So you know you're taking you're taking the earth's the warmth from the earth, moving it into the house, putting it into the floor. And vice versa, taking the heat out of the house and putting in the summertime and getting it nice and cold in there because they're they're coming up with all kinds of things like radiant cooling, radiant heating. Um, you know, their energy they're dropping energy bills like it's going out of style. And government sub subsidized programs. You know, right now in New Mexico, a geo geothermal system can cost you about eighty thousand dollars, but you get a sixty percent tax credit. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so you get thirty percent federal, thirty percent state. And that's a big chunk of money. That's a big chunk that's of money. Big chunk of money, and it's everything from the drilling all the way up to whatever the the geothermal is touching. Solar right now is forty percent, ten thirty percent federal, ten percent state. Um, another big one, and they're just I've got people who just put it to their domestic water. They have a tank and a solar panel on the roof, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And one of my old customers, she was like eighty five, and she used to get mad at me once a once in six months, because the sun would get blotted out and it wouldn't work, and she was she was angry because she had to turn on her power to get a little hot water for that one time of the year, and so she'd yell and scream at me, and then she'd go, "Stop by and have coffee sometime." And then she'd move on. So, in your opinion, that's that's kind of where. Uh people maybe should get into at least a little bit as far yes. as or where the industry well, is going right, right now. now yeah and it's and and, and and the other trades you know they're all starting to go green they're all starting to figure out the green stuff the heating and cooling is the biggest because that's what everybody uses not mm -hmm. everybody uses you know ammonia lines or you know steam lines but everybody is somewhere is trying to get comfortable in their house with the temperature and the humidity and all these things and and plumbing is a big big part of that and how it um operates and and it's just the basic foundation of all of it okay so okay um so it expands yeah okay so so moving on here a little bit um mm -hmm. you know we kind of touched a little bit about it but um what is and i know this is going to be very variable here but talking salaries for a plumber mm -hmm. oh okay you know what would be an average salary for you know, and, and now that we're talking here, it seems like there's just a huge world in the plumbing industry. So it's probably mm -hmm. very, very variable here. But what, what, what is an average salary that somebody can take away? Um, the median right now, I believe, last time I checked, because I always kept an eye on it, because just in case I ever wanted to go back, um, the average right now is between forty and 50000 a year. That's an average. You know, that's guys that are probably you know, have their own business and they're pretty successful and they're doing kind of, you know, their everyday thing. Um, the range, you know, I've heard of guys making 20 bucks, you know, 20, 25 dollars an hour easily, which is good, good money starting out. Um, it's mm -hmm. not the greatest in the world, but it's, it's livable. Um, and then I've heard of guys, you know, like I, I, I've heard of these guys, they're working, they're doing traveling and they're in the union and they worked six months and they made $89,000. Okay. And then the other six months, they were just kind of hanging out and just not doing anything. That's really good money. Yeah, that's um, must work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And there are guys that do that. They'll, um, you know, when the winter time hits, they, they'll do all their work, and then when the summer hits, they quit for the season, and they just take kind of take. But they're working all the time through that six months, trying to just, you know, just mm -hmm. get as much money as they can, and that's what they like to do. But, you know, I've heard, I've heard of guys, you know, like when I when I. When I moved on, I was probably doing about thirty thousand, just as you know, and that was that was with my business and me alone in my own shop. And but I had, as I was watching my numbers, I probably had about two hundred thousand dollars a year going through and parts and pieces and gas and this and that. And that's what eats into your profit margin is you know up I got to buy gas for this up I got to buy this up 
I messed that up by accident, but I got to fix it. So I got to use my own money to fix it. You know, there's mm -hmm. all these little pieces and, and overhead like phones and, um, you know, utility bills and all that stuff. And so at 30,000, it wasn't horrible. But the problem that I had was the money that came in was very sporadic because you'd get these floods of work and then it'd be, you know, nothing. Okay. And then floods of work and then nothing. And for, for me, my wife was like, that's not working for us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we need a yeah. steady paycheck. <laughs> and so and so then that's when I actually made the decision to try to find what I'm into now, which I've substantially increased my pay. And I'm getting a steady paycheck. Um, so but you they, couldn't have got that without the, without the plumbing. Exactly. Exactly. Because yeah. what I did is I cold called the guy and I said, here's what I do. Here's what I know. And he's seen my work and he, that kind of helped a little bit. Uh -huh. But he said, uh, yeah, come in for an interview. The interview went three hours, and he said, well, what do you want to be paid? And I told him what I wanted to be paid because I did the number crunching. And he just stayed quiet. And then uh, as I was leaving, he goes, you got the job. I said, well, what am I getting paid? And he goes, you made the number, not me. And he walked away. <laughs> <laughs> it leaves you wondering like, there. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, wow. All right. And then your first thought is, oh, I should have gone for more. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it's and i've been there for two years and i'm happy as i can be and i enjoy every day you know there are days i don't want to go but it's that's work mm -hmm. um it's not it's not fun it's work so it's um but work can be fun so it's uh but that's you know that's my that's that's where i got into it but it, that it was easy enough for me to just be able to transition just like that Mm -hmm. And it didn't take much, and it didn't take, you know, I just had to put my mind to it, sell myself a little bit, and it all worked out. And that's basically what you do as a plumber anyway. If you're going to do your own business, you have to sell yourself to the customer. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, present a product that you're going to give to them, and you're telling them that you're going to take care of them. And yeah. That's kind of, you have to do in everything. Well, that, that so. leads into my next question here is the presenting yourself and, and selling yourself and and. Do you see social media, a lot of plumbers using social media to market themselves now? Or oh, have they yeah. not gotten into that yet? Oh, they have. Oh, okay. no, they, they have. Yeah, no, it's, um, we tried, I, I tried to do it, but I'm not, I'm not social media oriented. I'm the more of the kind of the guy that uh, I'll meet you at the coffee shop or at a party or, you know, whatever. And it's, you know, it's, I'm more of a hand, again, I'm a hands-on person. So it, I'm going to be with you face to face. I'm going to shake hands where I'm an extrovert. Mm -hmm. So I have no problem with talking to people. I can be in crowds. I can do whatever, and it's it kind of works for me. And that's that, that's my charisma is what helps me sell what I'm doing. Um, I in my brain I don't think that I have all that, but I do, and I know that. But my brain's going, no, no, you're not. You know, you're an imposter. You don't know what you're talking about. And it's you know, <laughs> there's a whole other thing there. But it's that I'm able to do that, and I'm able to get through there. And that's that's part of my my you know, things that I have to learn with that. Yeah. And so, but, um, you know, it's, it, uh, yeah, they, that social media, it's, it's good for them because there's a lot of people there and people who are introverts, it works really well because you don't have to really show anybody, but somebody says, Hey, I need a plumber. And 30 people go, Oh, I know a guy. He's here on social media with us. Yeah. You know, and it's all word of mouth. Everything is word of mouth. Word of mouth is the best advertising. Um, but it's, um, you know, or, you know, slapping something on your truck or, you know, a sign out in the yard. Paying for advertisements hit and miss, hit and miss. Okay. But social media is the best way because it's all in one spot. You don't have to move around too far. You don't yeah. have to spend a lot of money getting there. Yeah, because if so, I type in plumbing New York and mm -hmm. your company is the first one that pops up on my Google search. Oh and yeah, I click on it and it's a beautiful clean thing and it's you know it's mm -hmm. got a beautiful video of your you introducing yourself mm -hmm. and your truck and it looks nice and clean and you talk very nicely. Yeah. I'm going to trust you that you know what you're doing, you know, and exactly. I'm going to go with you. Exactly. And in plumbers spend a lot of money for those w websites and stuff. We had one um, that was it was pretty good. We didn't spend as much as like I could have, but I just wanted to get the point out and stuff like that with with my website and give a phone number. Mm -hmm. Um but that's the biggest thing with any kind of social media. I get guys that'll they'll do all that, and there will be no phone number. There will be no way of getting a hold. There won't even be an email address, and it's like uh, you missed one major important part. How do they get a hold of you? 
<laughs> so people go, you know, that's the thing with the social media thing is that they forget the important thing, which is how to get a hold of such and such plumbing company. But um, no, the, the Internet has opened up tons. And a lot of times now with this kind of stuff, with like with the way we're doing with the video, with the Skype. Yeah. If you got a little bit of mechanically inclined inclination going on with you, um, I might be able to guide you oh. by phone. Wow! Where you don't, yeah, that's... so that I'm not having to hit, rush right over there right now because I'm too far away or something. But maybe I can guide you into turning the right screw and you know thumping on the right you know pipe and stuff like that. So that's also a, a plus with all this technology that's going. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about that. That is awesome. And, well, and then your equipment will have had now has stuff located on the internet. So when something breaks in some, your customer's house your equipment will tell you what broke so you know what parts to bring which can actually wow. be even more helpful so it's it's there's it's it's just a, it's a great way to do things and I, and it's not you know i'm not there are people that are like oh that social media is getting the better of us and it's going to do this and it's going it already has get on the train use all the resources that are available to you <laughs> yeah you have to adapt you have to adapt exactly. to as a business owner now exactly. is plumbing ultimately to most people try to create their own business, um, to create their own um, company? Yeah, I think so, because they like they like the idea of the freedom. Okay. Um, because to be self-employed, you know, nobody's the boss of you. And it's, you know, it's a nice idea. The only problem I see with that, and I did the business thing for a while, is that you do get a little bit tied to the hip with your business. That's your other, that's your other wife, so to speak. But it's the wife that doesn't give you a hug. It's mm -hmm. the wife that needs all the attention and everything. So there are some hard things, but there are people that love it and enjoy it, mm -hmm. and they do it, and they um, they're good at it. Um, I wasn't really good at the business side of stuff on that end, and I, you know, I just I didn't like coming home and having to put on my bill paying hat, and then you know put on my 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 dad hat, and then put on you know trying to figure that. I when I come home, I just wanted to come home and be with my family and. So that's where I. That's one of the other reasons why I changed is okay. Give a little bit, you know, give me a little freedom as well. But you can get freedom as as a business owner. I mean, you just have. To, I didn't know how to work it out, but there are people that have it worked out. I have a a friend in California. He owns um, he owns a fairly large, and how he gets away is he gets on his boat and cruises around the uh, river down there. And, uh, I'm, out, you know, I'm out of cell service. You can't yeah, talk to me. I'm out of cell service. You can't find me. But he's figured <laughs> out ways to make himself, you know, happy and, and, yeah. and get his time. In. Yeah, so, and there are ways I to grow. Prefer, I mean, yeah. there are ways to grow the business, not just yourself, and starting getting employees. Exactly. Yeah. And for me to grow, I needed to get out of that part of it and just be where I'm at. Is I'm my own boss. I set my own schedule. I do my own thing. But at five o'clock, I'm done. I don't have to worry about yeah. paying the taxes on the business. I don't have to worry about paying the light bill and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's the nice thing where I I have figured out where I needed to be. So that's where I did my figuring. But yeah, no, starting your own business is great, and some people do it as a hobby, you know, like a weekend warrior kind of thing, um, which is a great niche because ninety percent of the stuff that breaks is on the weekend or in a uh, in a holiday, and if you work <laughs> those days, you're going to be the only plumber in town. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that answers the phone, at least. <laughs> exactly, and you can advertise that as as something. I you know I thought about doing that, but it just it it and I you know I I was always available on Christmas. My wife knew, and I one Christmas I made like nine hundred bucks in like three hours. It's nice, nice, good chunk of cash, but it doesn't happen all the time. Yeah. Um, so I'll have to admit this next question I didn't I didn't come up with my wife did but uh, okay. you know it's it's pretty it's pretty important here too and I never would have thought of it and you know bad of me to for not thinking of this but what is it like going into other people's homes as a plumber um, especially for for women that are for or you know people like that that um, going into homes how is it safe is it uh, is plumbing something that you might think twice of if you're a woman going into a, another person's home. Um, hmm, let me think about that for a second. When, when you go into anybody's home, you, you as, a, as a service person or a real estate agent or anything where you're kind of close, you got to be, no matter who you are, man, woman, you know, you got to be on your guard. Um, even if you're a person who's being shown a house, you got to be on your guard uh, or something of that nature. But, um, 
I honestly think that women are a little bit better awareness than men. True. True. It, um, in a, in a sense, so it's um, not in a sense, in an actuality, because men, you know, like, you have you ever had your wife go, "Hey, look, did you see that?" And you're going, "Huh? What? No, I, I didn't see nothing." <laughs> yeah, we're invincible. Kind of, okay. Yeah. So women are a little bit more cautious in that way, and you know, society number one has put them there because of that. Um, and then I think that they're raised that way. I think women are raised that way to be a little bit more aware. You know, daddy's little girl. Hey, honey, you got to watch out for the big bad wolf. You know, so they've got that whole thing with where their where their boys are like, oh, run into that wall, son, and have a good time. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's a little bit different raising, but it's so if a woman and I, I've only known a few uh, women who were in um, in the service industry, but they work together. They were doing doubles. Oh. And that's how they, because they know what they're going into. They know where they're going. So it wasn't like, well, I'm naive enough. I'm going to go in here. No, it's like, I've got my partner right behind me and we're going to fix your problem and we're going to be super nice and we're going to take care of the deal. And that's how she did it. And then I, when I was doing service too, I had a, an apprentice with me. You know, the saying is every journeyman needs an apprentice, but not just for, you know, take care of, but to watch your back, to protect you. You know, it's a, it's um, um, uh a team effort to go into some of these places because there are some really crazy places you go into. Um, I've seen hoarders. I've seen um, mm. houses. We went into one house and they had rabbits living in it and it would, they had made tunnels in all their feces that was across the floor. And this person was living in the house and you know, it probably had 30 rabbits or something like that living in there. The place stunk and it was just, wow. I had to get out. Like I said, I can't help you. I got to leave. Um, then I was more worried about diseases getting into me rather than you know being attacked or abducted. But that's the thing that you have to, it's all that stuff. you got to be aware of where you're going into. But women that get into the trade, a lot of them are more in on the um, commercial side of things. Okay. Because they're able to, they're in a group. Um, and this is just what I've seen. And they're in a group. Um, they're They're doing their job. They're kind of, you know, there's nobody to, you know, there's somebody always is watching. And that's with everybody. Somebody's always is watching, and and that's that's where they mostly are. But the the gals that I've known that have done service, that's how they did it. Is they did teams and okay, and uh, yeah, no, and then usually you know you got a bunch of tools on you too. So it's somebody attacks you, you got a screwdriver in your pocket, you're gonna stick it in their eye. Or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're not really you're not really suggesting that plumbing is like necessarily a dangerous job. It's right. just you know just to be aware. Um, exactly you know and, exactly and that but that's thing. everything you want to be aware because you're you know if you think about it you're going into the wolf's den you're going into this person's home they have everything in there they know everything that's in there you don't and that's just common sense for any person that's doing this kind of stuff so but okay. it's you know i've never had the weirdest thing i had like was the, the like the rabbits the smell yeah but usually you know people are in such distress or the you know the water broke or this and they're just so happy you should showed up and that's that was 99.9 yeah. percent of my calls was just like oh my god you made it <laughs> <laughs> come quick come quick <laughs> you want a soda <laughs> you know, <it's> <laughs> now do you have a lot of call outs as a plumber did, did you get do work work a lot of after hours or weekend uh -huh. jobs or is that just your oh, yeah. choice um I, I did it as a choice and sometimes i did it because i had to okay um sometimes i did it to try to get a job done so that I could be ready for the next job, because I was a I was a single man shop, and I had an apprentice once in a while um, that would help me on occasionally. Um, they were doing other things; they had another job. But um, and then every once in a while, I'd have a team of guys that I knew that, would, like, if we had a bigger job, I would hire these guys as subcontractors. And that way, I didn't have to pay any of the employee stuff and mm -hmm. all the employee taxes that go with it. I'd hire them on as a 1099. But um, I mean, you can it's it's. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you, 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 it is what you make of it. Yeah, it is what you make of it. Okay, okay. So. And then, um, are there any any strategies that you've seen people do to obtain uh, jobs, um, such as aligning your business with with rental uh, companies or mm -hmm. getting in with general contractors and being a subcontractor? Oh, oh yeah. Um, you know, hitting up contractors of course you know and saying hey i'm an available subcontractor if your main guy's busy or whatever um one of the best ways i found was the the supply houses where the the parts and stuff are the wholesalers 
getting in there and meeting the staff and meeting the management that's running running the place and you know buying products and, and aligning yourself with certain products that you like and um, you know making friends with the salesman because he'll say oh I know you know they're the ones oh. who like somebody will come in and say I need a plumber and he'll say oh I've got a guy if you want to try him mm -hmm. you know they're not really allowed to say oh I've got the plumber for you but okay. they're they're allowed to give like three different plumbers you know they say hey here's three plumbers that work in the area or whatever but you can get aligned in that and you can leave flyers there sometimes you can leave cards um, getting in with contractors is a great idea because then you start to see other other trades where the guy will go in for an electrical problem and then the homeowner will say oh do you know a plumber and he'll go oh as a matter of fact I do and he'll call you right there and you know and then vice versa you know he's looking for some electrical or when the two combine, like if you're doing a boiler and you need some electrical help, you got your electrician right there to, you know, you kick him back a few bucks and he deals with his own things and mm -hmm. and so it's it you you definitely have to align yourself and then it all comes down to a union, so the union is kind of what everything and then you know the the same guys that are saying the unions are bad are unionizing with themselves and, and getting with other contractors <laughs> right. and all this they're stuff. They're creating, right? they're networking. They're their own, union. their own union, yeah. <laughs> so it's, um, but that's that's the best way is to get it all aligned with those things. And then you can call um, the products. Like there's, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Ream Water Heaters or A.O. Smith no. or um, Lock and Var is the boiler that we represent. Okay. Um, Lock and Var is a, an American-made boiler. And you can call these companies and say, hey, look, I'm interested in your product. I really like your product. Do you have some propaganda that I can have, or maybe put my name on your website as a as a um, a preferred contractor through you? And they have programs like that for all these things. So people who are doing stuff can say, man, my boiler's broken. Let me call up the boiler company. And the boiler company says, what state do you live in? Oh, that guy lives right down the road from you. Hold on a second, and that can get you a job and extend from there so you can nice. you can do those kind of things as well and and you know you that's where you have to kind of cold, cold call you know you call up a, a big manufacturer and say listen i use your product a lot do you have any stickers i can put on my truck or do you have you know can i put something on your website you know can i do you have any classes that i can take you know stuff yeah. of that nature. yeah they've always got something they've yeah. always got something well that's just your drive and motivation too which yeah. we find, which I'm finding out a lot with all these interviews, is it, you know the job is what you make of it, but it, you know the guys that are successful are the guys that have the drive, yeah, and the motivation well, to and succeed. They're, they're enjoying it. They yeah, well, it that's true too. Yeah, um, and it, it's it, you know the, the plumbing is a male-dominated trade, but it's um, more and more women are getting into it. <laughs> um, but it's it's a um, it's a, it's a viable option no matter if you're boy or girl or you know, if you're what you're looking for, um, and it also it, it might be one of those things that's not what you want to, you know, be the expert in, but you need a little bit of it to kind of understand what you're really trying to go for. It's bits and pieces, so it's, but it's all what you make it. Exactly, yeah. it's all what you make it. All right, um, but that's you got to make it with everything. It's what you make it in life. It's what you make it with your family. It's what you make it with. You can either have a bad day or a good day. Which one do you want? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Ezra, for taking time talking no with problem. us here. No problem. I know, hope I didn't stand on this. my preaching soapbox too long so. <laughs> <laughs> no and for all your listeners out there you know plumbing is definitely you know an option for people and you know hopefully this interview helps you guys out in in determining if this is something that you guys want to do so thanks again and uh, take care guys thank you all right guys if you guys have ever thought about becoming a plumber hopefully this episode with ezra was useful for you in terms of how to get into the trade and how to promote yourself as a plumber. So if you like what you heard, like, subscribe to the channel. Also, next week we're going to be talking with Gary Stiles. He's the education manager at the Motorcycle Mechanics Institute at the Universal Technical Institute based out of Phoenix, Arizona. So if any of you guys want to become motorcycle mechanics, that's the episode to listen to. So until then, later guys.